Hello YouTube, it is Damien, it is the Rise of a Nation, it is episode 161. Today we have the end of season 19 review, but it's not going to be a review as you know it. I feel like that they can get a little bit boring, a little bit of just like the same mindless things. Um, but today we're going to talk about something a little bit more different. I feel like last year we had a bit of the Nildo saga going on and how we might have replaced him, but mostly it, this sort of episode is like, we won the league, won the cup, we got knocked out in the Champions League by Barcelona, most times they're not. Um, and yeah, it's kind of how it's happened again this season. Um, as you can see, there's your stats there. The ball has got 40 goals in all competition. Tobias has been a great signing. He got 15 assists in his first season. was a signing of the season. You would imagine we are in the 17th of June on the game, the start of the window. Um, but look, we, we, we you know, we, we bossed it again in the league. For me, though, it's more about that we have a new tactic, a 4-2-3-1. There's a couple specific players that I need in the 4-2-3-1 that I think we're going to chase in the window. Um, we have $78 million to spend. That is your budget for this season. We have $208 million in the overall balance. Um, and we also have a 2 mil payroll. So like the club's given us money. Um, and secondly, they've got rid of that silly old sign higher reputable players, um, which the stream is happy about. And we are live, so links down below. And if you are enjoying the content, all the other content, then the links are all down below there. As you can see, they got rid of that sign higher temp, um, higher tempo, higher um, reputable players and spend the way to uh, spend the transfer budget, um, which is perfect and still keeping the emphasis on the having the best youth system and youth academy in the world. Put it to note, youth intake did come out this year. I haven't really had did have a great intake. And then um, Nils Dial came out as a free star player, and that's what's been happening. They come out as free star. They get into my training um, academies and my youth academy uh, once they have genned, and then the game goes. Hang on a second, world class system, world class academy, world class facilities. Um, yeah, they're going to become good. And I'm like, yeah, great. So you had like Nils Dahl that came out. Um, and our like best prospect was called like the Boom Boom. I called him the Boom Boom um, after Shady to Freedy because he's Pakistani and I love it. Um, like a name like the Boom Boom is like just so, so nice. Where is the Boom Boom? Actually, he went into the B team straight off the bat. Um, did the Boom Boom. Um, there he is there. Um, as you can see, the Boom Boom was apparently my best prospect when he came out. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they're not really developing too much. I'm actually going to move him back into the 19s and just hope that he uh, just develops. And I don't really see a player in the Boom Boom. The fact that he's Pakistani uh, makes me really hope he develops because that would be an awesome story to have a Pakistani player that would win the Champions League with me. But as you can see here, like Niels Dahl's come in. Um, Kenneth, Kenneth was a freestyle player now has that potential and that's world class or like leading potential for me in Denmark. So people like that worth having a look at. Like Stefan Sorensen, that's... One the kid potential we see it with um, obviously the car um, and that's kind of where we are and you look at Stefan he came out fifteen he got eight one ones they're already up to eleven and if he keeps developing like that he's going to be a decent keeper he's also got a little bit of interest from other clubs around like Leipzig who we took a player off that we'll talk about but yeah I'm really happy with the uh, with the youth academy etc cetera, etc cetera. but that's not what we're here to talk about we're here to talk about the tactical change that we made in the league um, and take the best out of the four two four that we've kind of got rid of in the 4-4-2. That was like a very much a hyper-pressing attacking system that focuses on having the Nielsen and the baller together in an advanced forward role and getting in goals or a complete forward advance forward. And then this 4-3-3 three, three, that was, you know, a little bit more deeper in terms of possession. Um, you know, it, it, it really worked on us keeping the ball and um, our underlapping wing backs into, into interplaying with the advanced playmaker and the Mazala with the wingers on support getting in, involved and then letting the baller get in behind from there as well um, and using Nielsen off the bench. Uh, and then lastly, um, as you can see with the pressing, that one there was a little bit more deeper. The 4-2-4, the 4-4-2 and the 4-2-4 was a little bit more let's go at him. The 4-2-4 we kind of changed a little bit. But with the 4-4-2 and the 4-2-4, I feel like it's that aggressive that, yeah, we'll get you goals, but you won't win games. And you saw against Barcelona this year that in the games that you don't get a highlight or FM just goes, you know what, no, you're not, it's not your day today, you get done. Um, I feel like in the 4 3 3 we never had a game like that. We always were in every game and we would lose or draw a game and then, you know, not score but not concede either in another game, you're out on away goals or, you know, you'll lose a tie by a leg or something like that, right? Um, I also feel like in the four in the league, the 4 3 would win a lot of games, 1-0, 2-0, but whenever we win a game 4-5-0, where the 4-4-2 and the 4-2-4 would win a lot of games, 7-2, 6-1, um, always conceding that one goal and that one chance, but the 4 3 3 would always be more defensively solid and not do it. My big issue, though, is that we had the baller and we had, um, and we had Nielsen, there he is there, and I was like, how do we get him into the same system? 
Nilsson's a natural shadow striker, which is perfect. He's not well, not natural in terms of position, but natural in terms of he can play here. When he's in outstanding form, he's a world-class striker and a world-class shadow striker. And if you look at him here, apart from the concentration stat, which I think is one of those stats that's really a bit irrelevant in games on FM, um, because there's so many other stats that probably impact the power player plays more, um, that if you look at him, he's unreal. He's a natural dribbler of the ball. He likes to come deep for his balls. He likes to play short, simple passes, even though he's really good at playing a pass. Um, you know, he likes to come deep to get the ball, like I said, and he likes to not ball past his opponents um, and runs the ball through, just through the centre, so which makes this system really nice for him. Now, I don't like the fact that he's six foot four in that role. I would love someone a little bit more nippier, like the car plays this role really well at five foot nine, right? Um, but apart from that, he's looked amazing in it, you know. He's got 24 goals this season. Yes, we played 4-2-4, but we've also scored a lot of goals this season. He's scored quite a few in the 4-2-3-1 from when we changed. I'll show you how we went in the 4-2-3-1 just quickly. Um, we changed a year against Saunders. We won 7-0. And from then, we didn't concede a goal. We won the Cup, of course, and the league, obviously. But more importantly, as you can see, we played Copenhagen, who were historically in the league, even with our dominance, against their 4-1-4-1 system that they always play. Find out hard to score against them in any 4-2-4 or 4-3-3 or 4-4-2. And we've always been that game 2-1, two, two one, or draw 1-0, one or draw 1-0, or something will go like that. Um, here we beat them 2-0 two, um, two and 4-0. Yeah, they probably had nothing to play with um, here, but we blitzed them. And as you can see, Nielsen from Shadow Strikers were... Um, actually, no, he played up front that game, the car played Shadow Striker. Um, but yeah, um, the system looks good. It's a different sort of system here. It kind of morphs the 4 3, three pressing triggers with the hyper-pressing nature of the 4-2-4, but keeps a midfield five. Um, when you figure the 4 3 3, it had five midfielders as a free midfield base with two wingers. Here we've got two wingers, a shadow striker that will come deep to get the ball. We've two guys sitting, and you know, the box to box allows you to have a guy just sit in and play ball where the box to box will come over and do that bit more dogged defensive work. And Dino is capable in the art of defense, and anyone that plays that role has to be. Um, and look, Dino and Ronald and Ronaldinho together would be really good in any sort of roles, but there we are. It also goes back to ball playing defenders, which is something we're natural in, but there's a reason for that as well. And the inverted wing backs are just on support, just so they can go and help Dino and Ronald keep the ball. Um, in fact, play up here, but also at the same stage, still be in a position to go and defend. So what it has kind of done is I've kind of took in what if we do best is what we're going to put into here. There is some player um, instructions that I want to explain, of course, as well in a YouTube video because not everybody's in this stream at the moment as we've just gone live and I want them to go watch it and understand it because it is a system that me, uh, Dimsim, deserve some credit in the Discord as well. Um, you know, AJ had a little bit of input. Paulie, obviously, um, I... I do the podcast with Paul and plug his stuff a lot. Um, you know, we were talking about what sort of system. I came up with the idea that I think the four two three one in a certain way will work because I can get everyone to do the roles that they're really good at. Um, as you can see here, it's an attackively minor system on the Gergen press. In the games that, apart from like Barcelona and that, I feel like we're going to be better than most teams. It's Barcelona, who did win the Champions League this year, so good on the Gildo and Aubrey. They beat Benfica in the final on a penalty shootout. Um, I think Barcelona, Bayern Munich are better than us, Liverpool are better than us, um, and then you're probably outside of that going... Uh, not many others, right? I think we're like the fourth best team in the world on paper. I think we're the seventh best team in terms of ranking um, in world football, which is an amazing achievement here in Denmark. But what we've done is we've gone and kept the system in terms of um, width. Just, I've left it up to the players. I've given that one whatever. Don't need to overcomplicate that. What I have done, though, is I've kind of gone and focused play in an area of the field that is our strongest. Now, yes, we have the baller who's world-class up front. Yes, we have Nielsen who's a world-class striker and is pretty world class in the 10 role as well. And we do have Dino and Ronald who are very good, but for me in a 4-2-3-1, and you've got the wingers that is Tobias who just got your 15 assists and Carlos who's carrying Portugal on his back, um, you want to play out wide. Uh, Carlos had a, still a pretty good year this year, just that Tobias has been absolutely outstanding. We've kind of focused down our left a lot more naturally, don't know why, um, but you look, we're playing one on support, which is Tobias. I didn't think there's need to change his role considering he's got 17 goals this season, 15 assists, no need to change it. Where Carlos seems to thrive is a bit more of a winger on attack. I'll show you a goal against Saunders that will highlight that. He didn't score from it, but he got an assist. I'll show you why. But yeah, we're, we're focusing play down the left and right, and then I've got us on playing out from defence. Now, that's why I've gone with the ball playing defenders. I want the ball playing defenders to get the ball from the keeper or from the fullbacks that I distribute to that give it back to the keeper, and then bang, straight out wide into the uh, wingers. We're going on a much higher tempo and slightly more direct. 
I normally a guy that would play either lower tempo or much higher tempo, but mainly with shorter passing. Keep that ball and move it around. Here it's like no. The passing the space as well and the speed we have with the baller, Nielsen speed, Carlos speed, Tobias speed, the passing ability of Ronald and Dino, um, we can get the ball and go bang. All right, one touch bang, I'm putting it into the channel, off you go. And if that's not on, great, I'm going to play my winger and then going to play a ball inside and it's going to happen one, two touch. But having it slightly more direct does not mean that the directness of the long pass is just always a bit more longer. What it means, it's kind of morphing between, well, we can go long or short, but it's going to be one, two touch, and that's it because the tempo is also higher. And I feel like that I like it. Work the ball into the box is on because in a 4 2 3 one, I feel like you need that on. 4 4 2 you or 4 2 4 you don't because you have two strikers up there. Sometimes it's beneficial to play it into the channels for them. In a 4 2 3 because it's one, um, one striker to aim at for that long ball if you are going to go long. Working into the box just allows uh, the baller to pick and choose his runs into the box to get it. It also allows Nielsen to play a ball um, and then go and make a run into the box as well. I feel like it kind of helps. Lower crosses we always have on. Um, but the big one is run at the fence. Now, usually I have it off. I feel like because we've got a much higher tempo and slightly more direct passing, right at the fence works in the system. So if I've seen it work for a lot of people. I've always had it in a shorter, more possession-based system because we've had naturally good dribblers. And what they'll do is they'll ignore the pass and they'll go dribble, 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 run into a cul-de-sac, lose the ball. For what I'm seeing here, because we're on a much higher tempo with a bit more direct passing, they'll go run, 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 run and then bang, defense splitting ball, game over. That's brilliant. And we have had a couple of goals and a couple of chances where it's actually Nielsen beating three, four guys and missing or scoring and I, I i don't mind that um i feel like this year they've got that sort of instruction a little bit more better than what it has been in like past fms and from what i've seen from testing this tactic in the league it does work very well um we are distributing to the full because they are inverted wing backs i turned it off center backs but the main idea is that the inverted wing backs can get the ball and can either go straight away into the dino or ronald or the wingers or if not, they're going to give it to the ball playing defender. And both our defenders are good enough to play a ball that is a big switch out the other side. Seems to work very well, um, is that. And then we've kind of gone with the counter press and the counter shape because we are going Gergen pressing. And we've gone with that. We're forcing the opponents outside, which is something we did in the 4 3 3. But with the 4 2 4 pressing of using offside trap, marking title, which I'll explain in a second because it's not just that. Um, and preventing the short goalkeeper's distribution from minute one. We are playing an offside trap, but that's because I've got rid of the covering centre-back. If I had a covering centre-back, I would play without an offside trap, so they drop off. That all was pretty standard, you know. Uh, the 4 4 you would have seen the hyper-press. What makes this so hyper is the player instructions. On every player, we have them on mark title. That is correct, mark title, tackle harder. Apart from the shadow striker, you can't tell him to do that. Um, but everything else has got uh, mark tighter where possible, tackle harder, and that is really it, right? What it does is it forces, and there's been times where we win the ball, and hopefully we find a highlight or two of that, where we win the ball because they're playing a ball into their winger. Carlos has come in, stood in an area that invites the pass, but because of his physically good attributes and we are pressing there, we will go there, bang, win the ball, and off we go. Second thing is, is that if we go to like opposition instructions at the minute, Right, um, if we've got a game here against a team that who doesn't matter, we would actually go and press all the players in the middle of the park. So um, all those guys playing in the middle of the park, what we're doing because we're forcing the opposition outside, when it's inside the zone of being wide, where all our players are congesting, we will go ham and try to win the ball. Why? Because we're so congested and narrow into that shape that we will go, thank you, I want to win that ball now. When the ball goes wide, there's no need to go win it. Secondly, because we're showing people out wide, not inside. I'm putting the right mid and the right winger or the right and the right back or the right wing back, whatever it is, showing down the right. Yeah, they're up there showing the foot might be on the right and they might be able to whip in a good ball, but it doesn't allow them to come inside, like teams like Barcelona and Co coming inside, trying to pick us off for a one-two pass, break us down, get in the box for that one-on-one. -on -one. May as well let them go and try and swing a ball into the six foot six that is Carlos, six foot two that is Ren Sheng, and all the numbers that are congested inside. It also means that when the ball comes inside, all our numbers are around, that when we win it, we can counter counter very well and hits while we have all that on. Um, same thing is on the other side, we'll go left and left, right, and there you go. Um, just for all that, I'm just going to go um, an hour and just you know get rid of all that before I forget, right? Um, but as you can see here, the new tactics doing well. Gashead, how's it going, mate? You're getting a bit nervous for the England game? Thank you for the raid, my man. Everybody on YouTube should go check out Gasset Gaming. He's also now part of the Discord. Links down below to the Discord, of course, are always there. YouTube, Twitch as well. Um, if you haven't followed this guy out, you definitely should. I'll just quickly get a shout out in there because I don't actually think North Beach is around. I know Dim is not in the chat and I don't think Rods is in here yet either. So I um, left myself a bit modless tonight as well. But yeah, the system here is looking... Um, 
is looking really good, um, as you said, and that marking title role, uh, YouTube, is what is really doing us really well. Um, that marking title, you know, on every player that allows me to, which is, I think it's the wingers and the center mids, the striker, um, and I think it's the wing backs or whatever, um, with that tackling harder means that they will put themselves, exactly, home is Italy, I'm an Italian pond, exactly correct. Um, they put, the players will put themselves into a position where they will win the ball and go press and win. Now, the run of form has been really good and the goals have been really good and just how we're scoring goals is brilliant, you know. That run there is been as complete as it is. Now, I will say again, Denmark to me is a bit of a farmer's league now. You know, we've won, what, 13 league titles in a row. Um, for me, it's about, in the 4-2-4 and the 4-4-2, we always conceded a goal in Denmark, right? In the 4-3-3, it's never convincing. Here, it is convincing every time we step out in the 4-2-3-1 and maybe this is the system. The last thing I'm going to say here, YouTube, is that we're going to get a very stern test. I've gone and scheduled a friendly against Man United and Real Madrid, and hopefully that will do it as well, YouTube, to go and test out the 4-2-3-1's luck. Now, if we have a look at here at the 7 year win we had against Saunders, now that was in the semi-final of the Cup. They, uh, they might have actually got relegated or didn't get relegated. We showed a few really good goals in here as well, but I'm trying to remember if it was the baller's second goal that was good or the baller's first goal. Um... Have a look if it's this one. There's one where Carlos makes the most intelligent run, and that's because we have him on a winger on attack. I want to highlight it. Um, and then I'm going to have to click on a couple games to try and remember what's going on here too. Um, yes, here we go. So you'll see here where Carlos puts himself, right, on the tighter marking role. So as you can see, Bull, for instance, has come in from a wide area here. Right, and if we go to the 2D classic, you can see here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six guys man marking one in the box. Great. Now, you might say against Barcelona or Bayern Munich or whatever, they would have more people in the box. I would also say, though, um, counterversely, we would probably have a couple more of these guys get in and around. Also, I think this is from kickoff, right? Ball comes in, Dini heads away, they win the ball back. No dramas, right? For me, though, because we're pressing narrow and because we've got the man marking roles, instead of Carlos just bumming into no man's land, he puts himself in an area where he's near marking a seven or the number 32. He makes the choice. See a lady wins the ball, right? And from then on, as a winger on attack, as the dogs go ballistic and everyone goes ballistic and sister and her friends here, our RNA, um, we then go win the ball and next minute it's just run, 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 cuts, cut back goal, right? Well, standard usual, yeah, right? But it kind of highlights what we're trying to do in the counter-pressing moment. Where in the 4 4 2 and the 4 2 4, it was all about, right, we're going to go press every player, wherever the ball is, all over the park, just right, crazily. In the 4 3, it was like, no, we're going to sit really deep, sit a bit more in the space, close the lines between the lines, and wait for the right moment to press in the middle of the park and win the ball back because we've got numbers. And I really did like that defensively. Here, we've kind of morphed the two. I've morphed it that we will mark tighter and pick and choose who we win the ball off because we're marking tighter and closer between players, and we're a little bit more compact. But at the same time, we, when we win the ball, it's like the 4-4-2 and the 4-2-4, where we're going to go bang and go ballistic. And I feel like we've got the right mix. I'm hoping that that's coming across to you as well, YouTube. I know in the Twitch um, chat that and the Discord that we've talked about, it seems like that is the case, and then, yeah. I feel like the last thing we are going to do is just watch the goals in the 4-0. Yeah, I did rotate here 4-0 against Copenhagen, but how often in this save have you seen us that we've been in Copenhagen they've only had one shot all day? It's not really happened, not even the 4-3-3. Um, we'll just go through the goals, but, you know, the short corner obviously still works here, YouTube, um, as well. Um, as you can see, Ranching over the back stick, great finish. But, um... I'm hoping there's a couple of goals in the last game of the season I haven't, that you will see the movement is really good. As you can see, Ives on the ball, Dino gets on it, ball winner Tobias, he comes in naturally. And because of the, um, because of the, uh, as you can see, the speed of movement, um, of the directness of pass and the much higher tempo, instead of playing a bit short or whatever, we move the ball back really well. Secondly, by the way, look at how the car wins that back. It's another thing of what I say. It's borderline in the lead, inside that middle zone but the car puts himself, because he's marking a bit tighter, in an area that he's going to man mark the if Johnny Isvin or press the ball, and then Maz takes too long, we win the ball, and Esteban's around him, right? Which is good. But then look at the directness of passing. First time pass here, one, two touch here, takes a touch, one touch from Dino inside the Tobias, one touch to Nielsen, one touch into the back of the net. Great goal. That's kind of what we do. Tobias loves coming inside, where there's a Carlos loves staying, getting wide when he can. Anyway, Nielsen through to Esteban, who's off the park. Falls back to Nielsen a bit lucky, but obviously that's the thing of the shadow striker role. You'll get people in those areas, which is great. 
And then um, in the 90th minute, Sander Bloom in a not bad spot. Finds Esteban who keeps the ball with Yepi and it's nice to see Yepi score a goal as well. But that's the beauty of having the box. The box midfielder back that we have a guy that will sit there and obviously have a shot as well. In the initial test YouTube, it looks like it's a really good system. The 4-2-3-1 might be the key. At the end of the day, we tried for many years at Mess and it was a 4-2-3-1 that won it. I don't think we're as good as that mess side, but we probably have as many world-class sides. I feel like the next tier of that mess side was that we had a lot of leading players. I feel like here we have a few leading players. We don't. I'm going to touch on that before I end. But what I will say is that the 4 2 3 ones were unlocked the door last year for me on FM. I used it first bit of this save. It didn't work for me. And I have used it coming through the ranks, and it hasn't worked for me. It looks like now with a new update and this sort of way of playing it with a little bit more directness, not playing a bit more possession based, but a little bit more directness, focusing more on let's win the ball back and how we win the ball. It seems like the 4 2 3 1 is back and back with a bang. And I'm hoping that this may be the system that will win us a Champions League. You guys let me know in the comment section below. You Twitch, as I asked that question, you guys let me know in the Twitch chat, of course, as well. Right, the last thing I want to touch on is that point. With Mess, which is my most recent Champions League success in a long-term save, which is last season on FM19, we went out that season, we got Legal, who was a world-class player on a free from Dortmund, right? We went and got out uh, world-class talent to come in on the bench. You had Adrizinho playing in the middle of the park, who was world-class, but backed up by guys. You had Mariba at 32 in that team. You had Tabot, um, you know, Tobdito, uh, the centre-back, you had... We had littered with world-class talent. What this squad is to me, and you look at it on paper, is there is a world-class group here. You've got four world-class people across the first four positions. You've got two ageing world-class players that aren't probably at that world-class peak. Maybe not Ronald, but definitely Dino is world-class. And now they're just dropping that tier, but that allows the car and Jacob to learn off them. That's fine. And then we've got a world-class back four. Um, Ren Cheng's usually four-star, don't know why he's not. And obviously a bad has been named. Not goalkeeper of the, of the world this year, but he has been named goalkeeper of the world in the past. So there you go. That 11 is really good. It's to me, and I'm looking at like, geez, there's an injury. I have to bring Octavio Alves on. Um, yeah, great little prospect and all hasn't really developed. Not good enough to come into the bench on this game. You know, I'm having to bring Marcio Luiz into the middle of the park. Not well-rounded. Or Yeppi Hansen I have to bring in. The car is great little prospect. Don't get me wrong, a wonder kid. Perfect. Jacob's the only one I don't complain about because I bring Jacob in and he's well class. Look how much he's developed already. Um, he's going to be one of the best regens we've ever had, right? Um, Esteban, as much as for what he's done in world football, doesn't worry me so much as a sub, but there. Lars is another one. Ravel is probably one that I don't mind, but what I'm saying is when it was at mess and we copped an injury or when I was at Sunderland and we copped an injury, it was like, geez, all right, you know, if um, Nakamura got injured on the left-hand side at Sunderland, geez, all right, Bob Donson, was a 17, 18 year old wonder kid, but he was already three and a half star in the Premier League. You know, world class, right? It was world class by 20. You know, so we had guys coming in that were world class, you know. If I had to inj if Adrian got injured, I played Mbappe up top and changed the system slightly, right? Um, at Sunderland. I don't have that luxury here at the minute. Hopefully these two signings I'm about to talk to do improve that. As you can see, Sergio Ayala was main reason he went 4-2-4. He's coming on a free. Elite striker coming from Spurs has had a lot of injury issues. But I'm hoping as a backup player, wants to be here as a squad player, will come in and be bang, go bang for me. He also chose to come to me over Benfica, who just made the Champions League final this season. But if you look at him, 17 off the ball, great elite stats, as you can see, elite striker, great finishing, composure, and dribbling, first touch. For me, if I bring a guy like that off the bench up front, or out wide, and it's not Lars, as much as I love Lars, we've taken a step in the right direction towards the squad we need. Second thing is Christopher Albert, I've been chasing all year, all year up until um, June, probably about 10th. He's been saying that, I want to wait until my deal was gone. Leipzig then made the decision that, no, you're leaving no matter what. You're leaving on a free. We're, we're releasing you. And then he's like, all right, I'll talk to you. In the end, he chose to come to me over Ajax, which is smart because I'm a bigger club than Ajax. But he's at 22, which means that we've already know what his potential is going to be. Do I think he's going to reach that world-class potential? No, I hope he reaches that potential. That's like 180 plus. If he hits three star, that's a leading player in the league with the physicals that he has, that's a perfect super sub to bring off the bench. German, been at Leipzig his whole entire career from 31 to 39. He's made 66 appearances, um, which is great. You know, from a young kid to now, that's fine. He's got some good player traits, but for me, it's the physicality. He's 22 and he has the potential to be developed to push Tobias for a level, but not understand that he's probably going to be back up for most of that time. For me, that's perfect. And that's another step in the right direction. A player that has come from a class sort of level that isn't the aging legs of Jefferson out on the left, and I've got a now another winger option that is brilliant. 
For me, it means that I'm probably lacking a, a quality midfield rotation player. Someone that was once upon a time Yeppi when he was at 32. You know, when Yeppi was like 25 and one of the better box-to-box -box midfielders in the world, right? Um, if we can find another guy like that, I feel like we're in the right direction. You may say that maybe a better backup keeper, but I actually think Dominic Burke or Batman, if he ever played more minutes, was, is actually a really good keeper. Um, and yeah. And apart from that, I think the rest of the team's sorted. You know, maybe a better centre-back as backup. But that's the sort of thing we're going with. With the 70 odd million that we've got to spend, it's now time for me to go spend 10, 15, 20 million on players that are going to come in and play maybe 15 games a season and do the job as a rotation player and be happy to do that. Is that aging players? Maybe. Is that players that are 2021 20, that uh, wonder kids that haven't hit their potential but still have potential to be very good? Maybe. Does that mean that we're going to actually cut ways with like the likes of Alves, Mulgaard, who's been on loan, et cetera, and then buy in other younger kids with better potential? It might be that too. That's the fun of this. Season 20 has the potential, and I'm going to bite myself for saying this, and or I'll bite myself like that, um, the potential to be the year. With the right signings, the boss of the squad that's already being bolstered by two pretty world-class signings, we could be in a position to win the Champions League. We stayed injury-free, got the right draw, and the 4 2 continues to work in this vein of form, and we'll hopefully find out with Man United around Madrid that it does happen, then we will be okay. If not, so be it, but I do think our window is open. It's a matter of getting the right tactic, the 4 2 wasn't it this season, and the right bench players in. And I feel like we get that right mix before Dini and Ronald become a little bit too old, we may win the Champions League and officially end the save. Anyway, from Damon and everybody else here, that is going to be the end of episode 160, 160 or 161, 161. I'll see you next episode. will be for the Champions League group stage draw and, of course, some Champions League games. I'll see you then. Thank you and goodbye.